Ah! Welcome to a special Halloween edition of Xanadu Comics Recommendation. <laughs> Alright, now on with the comics. So, this week, we've got the softcover edition of Warren Ellis' Secret Avengers, full of great one-shot stories uh, with a cast of really, really top-tier artists. Uh, there's a great Kev Walker story, um, and oh, an amazing David Aja, oh, Shang-Chi, Shang Zero Chi. Gravity Kung Fu story. Yeah. Possibly the best stuff to come out of this entire Secret Avengers series. Yeah. And definitely some of the best stuff Warren Ellis has ever... Oh, yeah. for Marvel. Usually it's like so-so, but each one of those, it was just done in one and had rotating cast of characters. It was, it was awesome. It was really awesome. Uh, so starting off with the Halloween vibe this week, we have Ghosts, with it, which is a special from Vertigo this week, which has got um, everybody from Paul Pope to what looks like Joe Kubert's very last story, which is not even quite finished, but it seems like they published anyway. And it has um, Jeff Lemire and Jeff Johns and lots of cool, creepy, good stuff. Uh, but yeah, definitely the, the, the big thing out of this is the Paul Pope story that they cut from the earlier anthology. And it looks really cool. It's got space stuff, and, you know, it's Paul Pope, which is awesome. Paul Pope is always good. Paul Pope is There's really never good. not at a time when you could use some Paul Pope. It's true. Uh, there, in other Joe Kubert news, there is the Joe Kubert Presents book. It's the first of six issues in the miniseries. It's... All kinds of stuff that he was working on. There's a great Hawkman story in here. There's Angel and the Ape. Some great yeah. war stuff. It's really, if you're looking for some variety and just some downright good comics, check that out. And how much is it? It's like, what? Five bucks, you know. Joe Kubert's worth five dollars, for sure. And we have the second issue of Happy this week, which is Grant Morrison's new Vertigo comic. Or, well, excuse me, Image Comics, sorry. Uh, it's The first issue was cool. It read like a, like a Warren Ellis comic, though yeah. a little bit, almost. It was, other than, than the weird, trippy, blue, cartoon, unicorn, mule thing, whatever it is. Uh, it was very Warren Ellis-y. But this one looks cool. It's got more, more weird unicornness. It's got Santa in it, which, you know, that's the creepy-ass Santa. As I'm, I'm creeped out by this Santa. Santa. But yeah, definitely highly recommended. Very, very cool. I think there's someone in his bag. That's troublesome. There, there is, yeah. I Maybe am he's worried. One of those, those pedophile Santas. Mm. touches you. And Never a fun time. Oh. Oh. Something that could be a little fun over here. Action Comics Annual number one. First of the uh, Action Comics Annuals for the New 52. Not for, you know, Action Comics ever. Unfortunately. Um, it's got Cully Hamner art. Cully Hamner is one of my favorite artists at DC, but unfortunately he's mostly been on covers for the past, like, five years. Yeah. Uh, he did, like, he did Red with Warren Ellis, which, of course, became a movie, and now is a sequel coming out. That's why he's not doing books. <laughs> yeah, he just makes money off of that. Um, it's also got an eight-page backup drawn by Ryan Souk, another person who only ever does covers these days. And written, actually, by Max Landis, the uh, screenwriter of Chronicle. This is his first published comics work. That should be very, very interesting. I did not know that. Yeah. And Ryan Sook does all eight pages? Five dollars. I think there's, I counted maybe three or four ads in the whole thing. Forty-eight pages. Definitely a great deal going on there. And this is some old-school, awesome Turtles action. This is the first Turtles comic written and drawn by Kevin Eastman in 20 years. A long time. That's longer than he's been alive. That's so freaking crazy. Uh, it's all in black and white. It's super gritty. It's super cool. It's got a trippy James Stokoe looking gradient cover. It's thick. It's big. It's the Turtles. And speaking of other 80s properties that you probably loved, and I was a little too late to actually miss it, to get while it was coming out, I've okay. uh, got Masters of the Universe Skeletor, Skeletor. one shot with phenomenal art by Fraser Irving. This is this is more than I have ever wanted from a Masters of the Universe comic. Yes. It's so many levels of badass. The first page has his face being melted off. Yeah. I'm not going to show you that, though. No, you got to buy it. Got it. Got it. Much more wholesome, we have August Moon this week. Uh, it's by a woman named Diana Thong. This is her first uh, top shelf book. And it's about a girl named Fiona and her father who moved to... Uh, 
the city of Calico, or the town of Calico, and uh, there's this kind of belief that the spirits, kind of like Halloween a bit, where the spirits come back at a certain time of year, and um, during the, the festival, she kind of becomes embroiled in this uh, war with this townsboy who is uh, claims that he's from the moon. And there's this weird kind of uh, Totoro, you know, Miyazaki-esque cat, spirit that, that that shows up and um it's just very it's very fun and all ages kind of uh you know almost manga y but but very very miyazaki -y in its its uh in its depiction but yeah it looks really fun and you know good halloween -y type of stuff for the kids for the kids for the kids something that might not necessarily be so much for the kids but for the kid inside of you you've got the tick meets madman which I think is the best 90s-tastic crossover that you never thought of. Yeah. Honestly, how perfect is that? It's The only thing that could be better is Flaming Carrot. But, <laughs> you know, whatever. You take what you could get. If only. Yeah. Um, more horror and violence and gruesomeness, as you know, you've come to expect from us. This is Bedlam which is the new book from Nick Spencer and Riley Rosmo. Uh, Riley Rosmo is really, really cool. I've, I've pushed his stuff a lot. He's got a really kind of gritty, uh, scratchy, ink splattery type of style. And this is about um, a, a killer named Matter Red who uh, terrorized the town of Bedlam about 10 years ago. And this takes place uh, uh, 10 years later. And it's about what happens next. And it's the idea of whether, you know, evil is really this thing that is, is inside of you and makes you do things, or if you really are just crazy and like to kill people. Um, but this is uh, Rich Johnston's, you know, bleeding cool, big speculator hmm. type of book. It's already out of print, you know, buy two, whatever. Uh, but yeah, it looks really, really cool. And Fraser Irving on cover. I just gotta say, you can't live in a town called Bedlam and not expect to get murdered. No, no, I don't know why you would live there at all. No. <laughs> On the slightly lighter side of things, there's a new issue of Wolverine and the X Men out this week. It's picking up the pieces from AVX. The school's getting back to you know fun mutant adventures, kind of stuff that like is what I was looking for when I first picked up this book. It's got guest appearances by Ghost Rider and Blade and Fat Cobra. It's Back just Cobra. really fun. Jason Aaron, you know, finally taking some time to really just have fun with his comics. Just how it should be. You know, tie-ins are tie-ins, but it's I nice to have books just, every yeah, once in a while. Books. Yeah. And ending off this week, it's big, it's hardcover, it's all of it. This is the Meta Barons. The Meta Barons is a spin-off from the Incal, which is Jodorowsky and Mobius's big epic magnum opus about John DeFool, who's kind of this unwitting pawn in a great game of, of cosmic chess. And this is about the greatest warrior that the universe has ever known, and four generations of it. Uh, this was previously published as four soft covers, which are 20 bucks a piece, so it's like 80 bucks. This is only 60, and it's hardcover. And it's got an introduction by Matt Fraction, who basically, you know, says what I'm saying, but better. And, uh, it's just, it, it, it takes Star Wars, and it's just, you know, it's space opera that, you know, you wish that George Lucas could have thought of if his chins didn't get in the way. This is just, it's all, it's all painted by Juan Jimenez. It's, it's, you know, Jodorowsky is the director of El Topo and Santa Sangre and uh, various other crazy psychedelic movies that will absolutely blow your mind and you should totally check out. Uh, but it's hard because his vision is tough to film. And yet when you get somebody like Juan Jimenez to draw it, it's it's really just, I mean, it, it, it's it's insane. It's, it's just gorgeous. I can't say enough about this. This is worth not buying other things just to buy this. Buy it. This is amazing. I, it's amazing. Oh, okay, sold. I'll buy the it. The Video Monkey sold. At least I hope the video monkey sold. <laughs> As an added bonus, you can use to salt any uh, Halloween hoodlums on your way home. You know, zombies, whatever. You know, it's, yeah. Cool. Great so, uh, right there. yeah. And uh, have a good Devil's Night tonight if you're, you know, you're doing that. Um, and tomorrow we will be in costume, so come get your comics and see us dress as, you know, goofy stuff. Not me. I won't be there. No, he refuses. He'll you know, prove that he's not going to dress up. That, that, that Hulk stuff, that's as far as we can get. I am extremely serious. He's very serious. Thanks.